Hello, it's me, Addy from Blitz Gaming. I hope you have a great day. It's lovely and warm in the UK. Oh, today's video, we've got all these lovely parts for our AM5 7000 build form for AMD. But before we get into that, in my last video, I stated if you have an ATX2 power supply and the lead you would be getting with uh, a 4000 series, a 40 series graphic card from NVIDIA, um, may catch fire. And in the video I did see, they did catch fire, but uh, I've looked at it incorrectly. Um, I'll put a video up here. It says all the story and all the problems, and what there's, there's not no problem. Uh, and also, you don't need an ATX3 power supply to run the 4000 series graphic cards. So yeah, um, I'll hold my hands up. Um, bad on my side, I got it wrong. So, but yeah, watch the video. Uh, it's all, all, all about the ATX2, the leads, and ATX3 and PCIe 5. So yeah. Nothing to worry about, everything you should get with your graphic card should work fine. Okay, so let's move on to something I do know, motherboards. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got um, a snappy old chunky box. X670 Aorus Elite AX motherboard. So this is a standard 670, not 670E. As I said earlier, I think on my last video, the 670E was like another £200, I thought, seriously? And all you're getting is an extra PCI Express lane. Uh, and I thought, really, I'm not paying 200 quid for that. So, plus I don't have no PCI X5 storage, so it's no good to me anyway. Um, but we do have a PCI X5, obviously, for graphic cards for future reference. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Not bad. So, we've also got our memory. Kingston Fury uh, memory. So yeah, uh, it'd be nice to get that up and running. This is the uh, the kit which comes with uh, the Expo profiles. So we're using that to set up the uh, overclocking uh, file, the memory, and then obviously we have the Ryzen 5 7600X go from there and obviously you must have read somewhere Rosin's hot so we have got a big Corsair fan to cool it down so I mean I've got a smaller version of this uh, in my main system uh, it's great does loads of glowies this one don't glow mind you but yeah can't go wrong uh, no problem. Right, let's unbox the motherboard and have a look. Yes, extremely heavy. Now this one, now okay, with the next one up, there's a nice big back plate on there. Uh, protect it all. We don't have that on this one. Um, I have to say, it could do with it because it is slightly bent. <laughs> so, uh, it's got a slight warp in it. It obviously won't have no much, too much of a problem. But yeah, she's definitely got a big chunky e-sync. The Wi-Fi, no problem. The new uh, AMD the sockets. Box. We have one multilingual installation guide. Basic quick reference design. Another Aorus, I'm not sure what that one is. Basically just tells you to go to their website. <laughs> we have a, an Aorus badge. We have a SATA connector, one with a 90 degrees angle, a bag with a M2 screw, 
another bag with an empty screw. That one's got the um, standoff. The Wi-Fi connector. Um, Gigabyte G connector. Not quite sure what that does, but it's a G connector. Okay, the motherboard. It's in black, it's like a gunmetal finish. Boris logo here. White line's going across with Boris logo here and Boris logo there. It's not bad, it's heavy. Um, it's a 16 plus 2 phase design motherboard. So it's got plenty of power. Um, so it should be stable uh, at the end of the day. So yeah, it'd be, it'd be pretty good. Like I said, it doesn't have a back plate. There's a big, well, there's a back plate, but the next board up, it's got a big plate uh, the size of the motherboard itself uh, for make it rigidy, really, uh, strengthen it. Because it can be, like I said, it is a slightly bold this board. Um, should be okay. It's just the way it's gone. So right, going around to the, uh, the socket at the back, I just put the logo up here so you can see it all. We have a Q flash button, two Wi Fi connectors, HDMI connector, no display port, just HDMI, USB, um, 3.2s uh, in blue. Type A's and USB 2's in black, four off. So we've got four black, four blue. We've got USB C, then we've got two more USB 2, 3.2's in red, yeah, which is a uh, generation two. And we've got two more USB 2's, uh, sorry, USB's 3.2 in blue, which is generation A. Next out, we've got 2.5 gig LAN. Then we've got the mic in, line out, and line, in, and line in so yeah uh, for sound so yeah um, it's got plenty of fittings on the back I mean I never would make use of all those USB sockets I mean there's obviously people out there who will but me it's not gonna happen um, I struggle to actually fill in six so <laughs> uh, having 12 is uh, gonna be an odd, odd one so yeah so we can come down to the bottom corner we have one audio connector for your system chassis yeah case then we have from there we have rgb lead strip and an rgb rgb addressable lead strip so together and we have the same again up the top here in the in the opposite corner so i've got two of each in total so and next to that we have the tpm header um which is down here so yeah uh, required not well not required but uh, can be used for Windows 11 um, and then you get a key for that if you want to use it but you have do have a security system there built into the processor which you can use instead for Windows 11 that's if you're using Windows 11 using Windows 10 doesn't matter then from there we have a system fan two more USB 2's Again, for your, your chassis, or you've got one of these coolers from Corsair. Um, they're power connectors use a USB. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a good thing to have the USB sockets on your motherboard. I know a lot of cheap balls these days don't have them, or they've come down to only one, but yeah, Corsair make use of them for your power just to make sure. If you don't know that the next to that we have a usb 3.2 which is a big chunky one um now if you don't know the usb 3.2 leads can be quite uh, they're very thick and they can break your socket so you've got to be careful next to that uh we have another system fan then we've got clear cosmos button the little blue button uh there and so basically, so you're taking your battery out. Bonus really, can't go, can't go wrong with that. 
a lot of cheating boards now don't have those at all. Um, then we have the front panel connector in the corner. It's obviously for your the on off switch, lights, uh, reset button, that sort of thing. And as we come round the corner, we have another USB 3.2. This one faces outwards, which is good because then you ain't got to bend that wire. Uh, well, it depends where you got it in your case, but usually the wire's facing up and you have to bend the wire quite heavily. And it can be a bit, as I said, could break your socket if you're not careful. Then we got four SATA ports. Um, these days, most people probably won't use them. I do for for game drop for gaming. Um, those M2 hard drives. If you want large ones, they're expensive. And a four terabyte hard drive. Uh, what's that? Seventy pound M2 version, four terabyte, four hundred pound plus. <laughs> so there's a big difference in price. Seventy pound versus four hundred. Uh, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of money. So next to that we have, uh, what was that I got? We've got the Thunderbolt connector. Yeah, Thunderbolt, then another USB-C, which is good. So if you've got one in your case, you can, you can connect that to that. Bonus. We have the LED strip, um, say LED strips, lights, debug lights. Uh, four, four little lights, LED lights. Which is good, a lot of my balls, uh, cheap mud balls don't come with that. So that's good to have. Um, if you get like four red lights, my ball's not working. As <laughs> simple as that really. Uh, it gets down to one white light usually, it's working fine. And next to that we have another fan connector. Then the full 12 pin connector, 24 pin connector uh, for the mother ball. Then we have um, a reset switch and an on-off switch. Um, again, so if you've got it on an open chassis, uh, easy to turn it on and off and we'll reset it. Uh, easy to get out at the end of the day. Um, then we have, uh, again, I said about the lead strips are there. Um, then we have a fan connector for the CPU and an option fan connector for the CPU which you can use for water pump. Now if you've got like this, um, this comes with its own controller so you don't need to use the one on the, the board. Um, so yeah, you've got the four DDR5 sockets, uh, I think it takes 128 gig of memory, can't remember for sure but I'll put it on the screen. So then we've got the M2s. Uh, this one's been a slight grey. This is the PCI Express 5 version. Yeah, so this is the full speed socket. There's no storage devices out there at the moment. And if there was, there'd probably be silly amounts of money. Then we've got the PCI PCI Express 5 graphic card socket. It's also got an armored shield on it, and it's got one of these big buttons. Um, you can see there. Uh, because obviously when you get big graphic cards now, you can't get out of the switch. It's really awkward to get out of the switch. Well, they've put one on there which is easy to get out. Now if you get the board on top of this, they have the switch on the end, and you, like, it's like a little button, and then it pops the graphic card out. Okay, a lot easier, but it costs more money. And under the, the big shroud here, the heat sink, we have three more M2s. PCI Express 4. So you've got four M2 sockets all together, or MVMs sockets. So plenty of, plenty of them. Just a note, if you use those, SATA ports don't work um, because obviously you ain't gonna have no bandwidth left, all gone. And then we have the new socket in the middle um, of AMD. So yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Now I will put on, on, the, on the screen now, there is a, um, I've got a new feature on these M2s. It's like I've got like a quick release tab. I'll put your little uh, video up now. And obviously a video for the, uh, the switch. So yeah, uh, so it's got some new features from the last boards, uh, the last Oris board I had. Um, but then it's costing more money. 
I mean, like I said, 330 pound. Well, I, I've seen today it's 295 pound, and most sites is around 350. So yeah, it's a lot of money, and you don't even get a manual. I think it's a bit sad, really. Uh, uh, well, a bit more than sad. It's disgusting, really. You don't even get a manual. I mean, like if you've been building pieces long enough, you don't really need a manual, but something. It's just like Andy. What, what was that? What was that feature there? Well, because obviously you add new bits these days. It's like um, quickly see what it says in the manual. What you have, what's what's that? Um, it just comes down to you to know really, especially if you've not built one before. Uh, it comes down to you know what all these uh, things do. So yeah, um, but it's not a bad board. I mean, it's dear. I mean, it's it's, it's ludicrous amount of money. Uh, AMD balls are just madness. I'm sorry, they're just madness. Um, I will try and get more balls in, obviously, to show. Um, but we'll see. And then obviously we've got to benchmark this versus the old generation stuff. And Intel's 13th gen coming. I've ordered the 13th gen. It should be turning up on the 22nd or earlier. Get that benchmarked. Let me put, put it to the, together. See what's the best out of two. Really? Um, but I think it's going to come down. I think it's going to be close. Um, it's going to come down to who's got the cheapest platform. And at the end of the day, AMD don't have the cheapest platform. So, okay, one good thing. AM5, I'm sorry, AM4. Now, I've got a roadmap picture. It does show you AM4 is not finished. It's going all the way to the end of next year. So they do plan to release new processors on the budget side on the AM4 system. So we don't expect to see any budget processes on AM5 for at least 2024. So um, I could be wrong, they may do, may not. Pains how quickly these mobiles come down in price, I think. So yeah, there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, you see all the benchmarks in the second video, which will be up and running sometime next week. Okay, that's me done. That is all. And don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up.